Jamie, can you look up if that's a number? We're on Spotify now. Is Lit Thousand a number? I hope so. Hi. Hey, everyone. What's up? It's quiet. Too quiet. Yeah, I would agree with that. Let me see what's good. Okay. I'm still loading the live stream just to make sure. Okay, it sounds fine. Yo, what's up, everyone? I'm definitely going to check the track level later. But as long as the click is not in the stream, I think we're good. What was I going to do? Oh, there's a bunch of stuff I wanted to do today. But first, let me say what's up to everyone and make sure that the chat is in front of stuff. Um, The first order of business is... Let me check and make sure I have this thing. I put it on streamable, so I don't know if it's still available. Let's find out. Oh, that's the video of me worshiping cat gods. Okay. Hang on. So I have a couple videos that are in the works. The first video I wanted to share with you guys is called DIY LED drum set or something to that effect. And it has to do with the lights behind me. Yo, what up, Jaden, dude? Thanks for being here. I was just about to unveil the stuff that I was going to talk about. So the first video that I am working on is about this thing, which is the LED triggered lights and drums. Yo, Senor Taco Boy, what's good? And anxiety. What's up? What's up? What's up? Thank you guys for being here. I appreciate you letting me know you're here in the chat. If anyone else is here, thanks for tuning in. Um, I was going to continue to say the first video was that. The second video was... What's up, what's up, James? Thanks for being here. The second part is how to drive stick. So, yeah, drumsticks. Boo, right? This is a, the worst pun of all time. But the channel's called Stick With It. I figured why not learn how to drive stick. And I'm going to play you a clip of this. It's the intro to the upcoming video. And when I post this later, I'll put the clip that I'm playing for you guys in the video so that you can see it too. Okay. So driving stick is as easy as one, two, three, four, five. My day reverse, is great, Senor Taco Boy. Clutch, Thanks for being here, dude. And, and you can't forget this. So driving stick is as easy as one, two, three. I'm sorry, he says driving so stick. Driving stick is as easy as one, two, three, four, five, reverse, clutch. And you can't forget there's a uh, gas and a pedal at the brake, um, uh, steering wheel too, and all, and all the other regular stuff in a car too. So that's just the, the first line of the intro of the video. It's me and my boy, Frank. He plays drums and maintenance and YO duo. And he's been on the show before, uh, behind the kit. And I was over there asking him questions like how his day was and stuff. It was a lot of fun. He brought his SJC drum set, which was sick. Chardifer, what's good? Frank is a really creative drummer that comes up with the parts that you would never expect to see in the song. Like chokes at random parts, bells on like an upbeat and stuff like that. It's pretty interesting to see him play live and put his own unique like live spin onto stuff too. But uh, yeah. If anyone else plays drums, let me know in the chat. We're just we're going off of a couple of bullet points today of, of just stuff that I thought would be interesting to talk about. And AJ will be in here. The other AJ will be in here to help me with the discussion part, which is the how not to mic your drums thing. Um, But yeah, I'm trying to create this community for drummers 
who want to learn and just grow and people, not just drummers, really anyone who's interested in learning other things or sees the value in learning something different because it'll help you do what you do better. I think that's a better way to describe who this is for because we're learning all sorts of stuff. We're learning how to drive stick. I would definitely like to challenge myself to do a lot of other things that are outside of my comfort zone. So if you have any ideas, definitely let me know. And if you're just tuning in, thanks. We are we're about to talk about how not to mic your drum set. I got a camera on this mic over here. JP says he wants to start drumming. He's hoping to record some stuff these coming months, and him and his friends don't have a drummer. That's a challenge. That's pretty... It's it's hard to get around not having a drummer. There's a, co- there's a couple options if you aren't a drummer and you don't have the access to record drums yourself. Getting into getting the mics and the interface, that could get expensive. So if you're just trying to do a demo project and you don't want to go that hard, I would recommend trying something like the drum MIDI drums and Logic. You could find samples online that work with most DAWs that you would record your guitar into that let you have a digital drummer to fill in with sounds that are a lot better than you could get off of just a, like trying to piece together a, a drum miking setup. But that's not always the case because you can make a very, li- very little bit go a lot a long way and what i mean by that is you can use your phone in the room as a microphone you don't need a crazy expensive mic all individual drums to have your stuff sound good if you know what you're doing and you have a good ear you can just take your iphone or whatever phone you have put it on voice memo put it in the sweet spot in the room where it's not getting like overloaded by all the sounds coming from the cymbals and the drums and the snare And then just get a clean recording from that to a click, maybe in your headphones. It definitely helps to have two devices. So if you have an old iPhone or your sister's or your mom's or someone's device that you can use as like a playing sounds device and another device as the recording device, that is definitely a way to get around having expensive stuff. And you can get pretty decent quality like iPhone video these days is incredible. Phones have come a long way. The microphones inside the phone have come a very long way. Like any loud sound before would just instantly get washed out. And now that's not the case. Like you could put a phone on your side and play drums with the phone right next to you and it won't clip or distort or sound like you're in the middle of a dumpster fire. And that's very handy. Because, again, you don't need a whole bunch of crazy gear to get where you where you want to go. Uh, the other minimal drum miking setups that I think are worth looking into are two mic minimal drum kit setups where you're maybe you're doing two overheads and maybe you want to try a technique where you have maybe the kick mic'd up and the boundary mic at the snare or for the rest of the drums. That's another way to approach it. You don't always need the 8-channel, 16-channel interface with room for a mic for each individual drum, snare top, snare bottom, kick in, out. Once you get into all the those extra sources, there's an upper limit to the control that you're going to have there. And different mic techniques exist that allow you to get a clean stereo image without having a ton of gear, which is cool. Uh, one of the configurations that works for me, I have this little Tascam handy recorder and the mics are like an XY configuration. So if I put it like far away from the drum set, the this microphone captures one side of the kit. That microphone captures the other side of the kit. The kick is loud and punchy enough in the room by itself. So you don't really need to have extra mics. The cool thing about the Tascam is you can put more mics if you want. So look into gear that is versatile in that way. Maybe you want a portable recorder that you could bring to the practice space without having your whole laptop interface, USB plugged in somewhere to put the computer, somewhere to put the interface. 
Then you run the cables. The interface needs power. The laptop needs power. Then, okay, now we got to run the mics to the drums. That's a lot of work. It's very time consuming. Maybe you just want to make ideas happen. Use a phone. Look into some of the handy cam recorders. Like I think Zoom makes one that's made for that exact kind of thing. It's like a hundred bucks. Having a dedicated thing to record yourself to like track your progress is very helpful. Um, yeah, it's it's also helpful to try a bunch of different stuff and see what works for you. Um, what works for me doesn't necessarily work for everyone, and I respect that. Uh, if you guys have any tips for recording or just how do you demo your ideas? How do you go from the stage of uh, uh, humming something to playing it with your friends? That would be interesting to hear in the chat. I think I'm going to also get a head start on the, the how not to mic your your drums video. I thought it would be helpful to have someone to demonstrate like what happens if you adjust the mics in different ways as someone is playing them consistently, just so you can hear how different it is. Like, for example, if I start hitting this drum and I tilt the microphone up, what does that sound like? So maybe I'll do that on my own for a little bit with the things that I can um, reach, at least. Chartifer, I'm your friend. Hit me up if you need a drummer, dude. I got you virtually. You, we, we might not be able to um, jam live, but if you need a drummer... I can do my best, my darndest. Uh, you use voice memo? That's clutch as hell. See, less is more. I saw Kenny Beats. I don't know. Do you guys watch Kenny Beats? Kenny Beats is amazing. We got into him over the summer a little bit. Uh, AJ and I were watching some of his videos with the cave, and also just him producing on the fly was cool to see. He's got a lot of skills, and I, you can learn a lot just from watching him. He took this, like... Um, this sure microphone that you plug into your phone and it's like some sort of condenser microphone that you can track voice memos with. And then he recorded this drummer who is pretty well known. He's about 15 years old. He's like a prodigy. His name is JD Beck. He was just like playing a, a little groove. And I was blown away by the mic quality just from them holding the mic up in the room. He's like, boop, air dropped it to his phone, Dropbox it, whatever. Okay, let's drag it into Ableton. And he was right off to the races. He didn't even waste any time thinking about, oh, this didn't sound good enough. Let me go get the mics from the back room, set them up, get the 15 mic interface. I'm, I'm going to need two drums per mic. One on the top, one. No, we don't need to get into it, Kenny Beats. We just use our iPhone. You don't have to go that hard. Imagine, though, <laughs> he just, like, stopped everything, and he told them, no, we're setting up all the gear for this now. It's not good enough. JD sounds great behind the, any kit, so he just played a little break that was really groovy and catchy, and Kenny flipped it. And Domi was there. She started recording some keys over it. It's And it came together with like four or five layers. It was a song. The, Domi played keys like a couple times before it was done done. But one, one drum layer, a couple keys and synth layers, and that's all you need. Uh, what else was I going to get into? Just production as a whole is useful to have as a skill set when you are trying to start a band, looking for a drummer. Charter for two drummers make one band. Yeah. No guitar, no bass, no any other instrument. Dude, that needs to be the next wave. We got to start this. And that's what I was hoping to do with Stick With It. There's a Discord where you can just, like, post random videos of you trying to play stuff. And it's like a judgment-free zone where the only rule is to be yourself and just share what you're up to no one is going to judge it and the only thing you have to lose is the access to the critical feedback that could be helping you get better if you want that um i get it if some people don't feel comfortable in that setting so don't feel bad if that's not you you could also just go in there and ask questions maybe you're in the market for a new kit or something and or new snare or new sticks. Like there's homies in there who will give you the lowdown on what they use. And it's not like a big head type of spot for people. 
it's more so a low key laid back type of type of vibe. Um, if you guys were with us when we played Among Us, one of the guys from the drum chat came and played Among Us with us. That was pretty fun. Uh, his name is Cedric, and he's a pretty funny dude. But yeah, miking drums. There's probably 10 million different things that you could do right to mic drums. And about 10 million more things that you could do wrong when miking drums. When are we playing Among Us again? Bro, I'm trying to do that more often. That was a lot of fun. I would love to play more games. I would love to get some sort of Minecraft server going. And maybe we'll talk more. If you're in the ShakeOut um, Discord, uh, let us know if you're into gaming. And we will definitely try to schedule more ev events like that. Uh, yeah, let us know. What other games do you play? I played COD. I played Fortnite for a while. I got shit for that, but whatever. Um, I played a lot of Ratchet and Clank growing up. That was one of my favorite games. And the soundtrack for that game, so sick. Very inspirational. Um, any other games that have a sick soundtrack, let me know. Tony Hawk is often noted. I think we talked about that on the Shakeout stream a couple times. Tetris. Ding, da da ding, da 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 Among Us was a lot of fun. The Tetris theme, get this, if you're packing a van, if you're loading the van, 150%. Increase in your loading skills if the Tetris theme is playing. Um, in case you guys ever have to do that on your own or at work or whatever. Like packing groceries, something like that. Just play the Tetris theme. It'll go by way quicker and you'll be better instantly. It's a cheat code. I will now begin the part where I just break everything. No, I'm kidding. I would like to hear if you guys have any questions about miking your drums with a setup that has a mic on each drum or like what are some ways to get around that. The way that this kit is mic'd up is there's, I think, eight channels. Snare top, bottom, tom one, tom two, tom three. Kick only has one mic. Typically, the kick will have more than one mic. And then an overhead, which are actually underheads because to put overheads in this space would be difficult uh given the the limitations so they are clamped i don't know if you can see them let me try to point to this one right here you could kind of see it on top of the um on top of the box in the bottom there maybe i'll turn my overlay off so you guys could see it a little better hold up there it is okay cool So those are clipped into the onto the cymbal stands, and thankfully I have these. This wouldn't work with every setup because sometimes the cymbal stands rattle or rumble, or there's hardware on it that shakes. Thankfully I have cymbal stands that are in good enough condition th that they don't do that, and I can get away with this. The key, whenever you are placing a mic, I don't know if that's AJ knocking. If you're knocking, come in. Oh, word. I was saying the key if you place a mic facing the opposite direction of other mics is to flip the phase on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the snare bottom too. Like anytime you have a mic on the opposite side, you have to flip the phase. But it also helps to listen and A, B it because sometimes flipping the phase will make it sound wacky and it might not be the best move. Maybe the mic is like sideways or something you know it's hard to tell phase is like you get into physics and acoustics and all that stuff so it gets really complicated but just hit that button it looks like a circle with a line through it in most DAWs or on the console as for um putting stuff in the kick drum i have this little pillow in there and this kick drum also has an emad on it which helps you dampen the sound so that it doesn't really sound like a big, boomy, um, like reverberant, sort of echoey type of sound, which is helpful when you're in a setting that you're recording because that might make the mix sound muddy if it's there.
Have you ever tried anything else? Does that thing need to be on? Because I don't hear you in my headset. Thanks, Charterfer. Um, secrets of drum miking with your hosts, AJ and AJ. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. You ever okay. notice the gear is slower when it's cold? Yeah. It sometimes this thing takes a minute to load when it's yeah, frozen. That, I just that happened my my thing this morning too when I moved it into there. It was like taking a minute. Um. No, but I was saying I always use an EMAD. I've always used an EMAD, but I was I've messed with the Super Kick because I know Donald likes the Aquarian Super Kick, but the Super Kick is dope. I think any kick head that has like some sort of foam or uh like some sort of dampening built into it yeah. is typically going to be better for rock or styles of music where you just want like a punchy yeah. kick sound. Yeah, I agree. I've always liked the E-Mad the best. I don't know. It's always been my favorite. Me too. What's up, Karina? Yo, what up? Charter for how often do I retune my drums? Dude, <laughs> I'm so bad when it comes to that. I just want to play most of the time. So unless I set aside the time to like sit there, take every drum off and retune it, they just kind of live the way that they are. And I'll, I'll tune up like the lug that's closest to me to kind of yeah. touch you, it up. You, yeah. You hit there a lot. And yeah, these drums are pretty nice because they, they're not like greased up to the point where the, lugs come out on their own while, just from playing it right. so unless the temperature changes like it did down here with the winter yeah. they pretty much kind of stay in the right tuning and i think it's because they're so old that the lugs are just like not they're broken in you know yeah, yeah that makes sense and my snare i used to have that pork pie this is also a pork pie but when we were recording uh bouncy and balance with matt my lugs just kept, they were so greased or I that. loose that for, just from hitting, doing rim shots on the snare, the rim goes down a little and this rim that, uh, the lug that was closest to me started backing out slowly. So we started using lug locks and even then it was still unscrewing. Yeah, I remember. So even though the snares on this thing broke a, a couple times because I had it cranked when I first start, set it up and the light comes through it pretty well, which is dope. It's a pain to tune, and the lugs stay in pu in place, so I'm thankful for that. Word. Sounds good, too. I didn't think we would be streaming today either, but no, I actually knew we were streaming today because this is the stick with it day. I was going to mess with different times of the day. I think this might be a little late for some people, but a lot of the people in the Discord are from Europe, so... It makes it even harder. Yeah, that's true. You should probably go earlier. Um, you want to hit those lights? I don't know if it's like too much light in here. Thanks, dog. It's lit enough. Okay, so here's the premise that I was thinking of. There's a couple things I was going to try to demonstrate, which I think we can do together more easily. But I ha this is the bit that I wanted to run by you when I hit you up on the phone. Okay. I need you to pretend that you've been in a coma for however long and you never knew, you never got to learn anything that you know about drums or microphones or micing okay. kit, recording, that sort of thing. Okay, okay so this is the scene. It's 2.15 a.m. On, on, a on a Thursday night and you just woke up. Or technically Friday morning. My bad, Friday morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like, that's like at midnight when you're like, what, what time do we need to do that thing tomorrow? And someone's like, don't you mean today? <laughs> you ever have that person? <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> the technically guy. Um, technically, I've been that guy too. So yeah, I've been that guy too. <laughs> I just did that to you pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah, <laughs> you did. It's cool. You're, we're lucky you're an insomniac, yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, it'd probably be impossible to stream at the same time that you're awake during the like normal day. 
Uh, back to what we were talking about, the whole coma thing. It's 2.15 on a Thursday, and you just woke up from the coma, and now we are here. And the first thing I do, drums. <laughs> That's the scene. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sweet. De- is it Death Dad Gaming? That's a dope name. We got a question about drums. How do you lessen symbols coming through your tom and snare mics? Uh, that's a great question. Would you like it to have a go at this? Uh, I mean, I, I would say that the only, the main thing you could do, besides just make sure that the mics are pointed away from the cymbals, is you can just gate the drums in post. Uh, so once you get into your into your DAW, your your whatever program you're using, Logic, Ableton, Pro Tools, whatever it is you're using, you can just gate the drums, and you can cut out all the high end and just gate the cymbals out. Or I've done this a bunch too, where with the toms, you cut out everything that isn't a tom hit. You just like literally go into the the takes after you record, and you yeah, but you sure can't do that, that live, so. You gotta just put a gate. I would say a gate is the move live, but are these toms gated? They are probably right. I think I need to gate them harder because I was watching my friend mix on a gig that I did, I think last month, and he gated the toms way harder than I have them gated. But just to add to what you're saying about like the direction of the mics, each mic has this thing called a pickup pattern. And some of the mics are very directional, which means they'll only pick up stuff that's right in front of it. Other mics have this pattern where it'll pick up everything in the room. So be careful with that and just make sure you're using the right mics for the right things. Or if you have certain mics, they'll have one side of it that if it's facing up, like you can't really tell because it's symmetrical. Mm -hmm. So again, I guess the directionality of the mics is important. The key, I think, with directional mics is the point directly behind the mic is called the null because that's where you don't get any sound into the microphone. It picks up the most from the front, and then as you go around the side, it's less and less and less and less until you get to the back. So with something like the snare mic, a good key would be, uh, a good trick would be to... Make sure the back is facing the symbol. Exactly. Or for instance, with the crash, when you're miking the tom, here I have the splash here, so I can't really get it right right next. It's going to get a little splash in there no matter what. Yeah. So that's also another trick you can use if you're specifically tracking and you're not trying to, um, you're not trying to be comfortable. Sometimes engineers will tell the drummer to elevate the cymbal so they're like more isolated on the recording. And some engineers will also say that's stupid because the drummer should just be comfortable. Um, yeah, this is we're getting a little technical here. Sorry, oh, Karina. Well, death, death, dad. Get, he said he runs front house, or they said they run front of house. Um, but yeah, if you're if you're running front of house, you just have to. If you can, I don't know what what you're using. Or who's miking the drums? Who's miking? But yeah. besides pointing the mics away from the drums, I mean, all you can do is gate them. But you have to have a gate available to you. So if you're using like a regular old mixer, or I don't know what you're using, but a lot of them don't have a gate on them. But the digital consoles tend to have gates built in. So that's right. A lot of a lot of the a lot of the front. Of ha- I don't know what you're, it depends on what you're using to. I had three major tips for recording drums, and that was part of it, is just, like, knowing your your interface. Like, step one, before you even get into miking stuff, should probably know the thing you're plugging the mics into really well and understand, okay, I want to hear a song and record drums at the same time. How do I plug my headphones in? How do I plug these cables in so that I can do that? And... And don't just jump right into the recording part because that then that gets really frustrating and the whole session can like fall apart. Yeah. But if you're doing front of house, you probably know how to like bust your voice to different monitors. Oh sweet. That's what we use too. Yeah, yeah. That's what we're you that's what we're going through right now. The X thirty two is sick. Um yeah, there's gates all in that. You just just throw a gate on, on your uh on your toms. And I think the trick with the gate is not to be scared to crank that thing because I think if you look at the graph on here, on the gate thing, I have it like down here. Oh yeah, there's a drum thrown in there. I So the, the gate thing is a square and I have the gate 
starting like the threshold here, but it can be way further up. So don't be afraid to increase the threshold to say like minus 30 dB because once they hit the tom, that's definitely coming through. You know, that's loud enough to break through the gate. I guess we should explain that a gate is a thing that will cut out all the sound up to a certain level. And as soon as it goes past that level of loudness, the gate will open and you can hear the sound. And the way that works is really crazy. It's kind of amazing that we have that sort of ability. But uh, it's super helpful for that exact scenario. Maybe you don't want the cymbals or the snare in your tom mic. This tom mic is definitely picking up the snare. Like, it's pointed right over here. Oh, the claws? You shouldn't have. Ho, ho, ho. The claws are here. I don't care. <laughs> Thanks, Sam. Dinner. You don't get mic problems with the piano. Is it, like, a real piano? Like, an acoustic piano? Or is it a, um... Is it a... Electric piano? Because those are really easy to mic up. <laughs> Electric pianos? I don't know why this thing is just, you, like, turned wait, off. Do you, do you usually mic up your electric piano? Like, you just put a mic on the, like, shitty speaker that's attached to them? Yeah, I do it for the real rawness and the character of the sound. <laughs> like, when you mic a piano speaker, you get to, you get to really immerse yourself with that instrument. <laughs> it just sounds better through the speaker, bro. <laughs> like, when I want to hear a Casio... <laughs> I want to hear a Casio. <laughs> it's a first act or a Yamaha. I want to be able to get that detail in the sound. I got a Williams, bro. Oh, it's like a Sh Sherwin Williams. Like <laughs> Speaking of mics, I want to get, I was looking at them today. I actually have it at Guitar Center. I saw up in Rich Hill, too. I kind of want to get one of those little Sure mics for my phone. I they was just the, talking about that. They make the Sure condenser mics that you can plug right into your iPhone. It literally has just a lightning port on it. And it's just, I've, I was watching demos of it, and it's like kind of, like it's expensive. It's kind of crazy. It's like 150 bucks, but it makes the audio on your phone like way, not, like you could demo with it if you wanted to, and like it sounds good, but like just the amount I v film videos on my phone, I'm, I'm almost like, yeah, that's like. That's worth it. Probably be worth it to get that little condenser guy. The, uh, um. Kenny Beats gives us away all the time. The sure ones that are yeah. Omni, those are sick. And they also make the one that's an XY pair, which is yeah. sick if you're doing like a drum set. Um, but I was saying on the stream earlier, the uh, videos that J, uh, JD Beck, the drummer, did with him, with Kenny Beats, yeah. Kenny just put his phone, iPhone, with that microphone yeah. plugged into it, and he'd use those drums. It was good enough. It sounded awesome, too, because he, like, crunched it and, yeah. you know, he yeah, did those, his thing. Those mics are sick, man. I kind of – I think I want to pick one of those up at some point. Cool I saw that. Make my, uh, make my TikTok sound better. <laughs> yeah, bro. <laughs> you definitely need to get pristine quality TikToks. Actually, I have a Rode one that's like a, goes into the headphone jack. Oh, yeah. And I use that just for when you're talking at it, it picks up your mic, uh, your voice way better. To Karina, I would say, sorry to just like completely cut away from our conversation. Recording yourself is a challenge, but it's also a skill that you can get better at. So, yeah, I do. I always do say that it is. You should record yourself. I think that when you record yourself as a musician playing at all, getting to actually hear yourself back is what helps you improve. Like you, like I, there's so many times where I'm like, oh, I, I think I was really good, and then I record something and I listen back, and I was like, oh, that was Yikes. not, that was not as good as I thought it was. I could, that could be better, and then it helps you improve. But I also will say that if you're recording a, a something like I don't know, like a like we're about to do an EP, right? I always definitely prefer having that extra, especially for vocals, like having that extra person to just like prevent you, yeah. reassure that it's okay. Because you can get inside your head. Yeah, yeah. I think it's just, it's nice to have. And it's nice to have someone that's like, especially when it's someone that's not attached to the song in any way because they're not like, like it's just like an outside party. Like it's just like, okay, cool. You're not, you have no attachment to this. So you're just going to be honest with me about this. But you're also going to be honest with me about this enough to be like, no, dude, you did it fine. Or like, no, that needs to be redone. There's that little voice in the back of your musician brain that's like, that wasn't good enough sometimes. And 
You could spend all day doing one word if you let that voice get too loud, you know? Like, oh, that didn't sound right. Oh, that didn't sound right. Take, 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 thousands of takes later. And the last one you did sounds just like the first one. Yeah. So, like, you just, you just, it's nice to have, like, that, that extra person there. Especially when they're better singers than you. That's always also really oh, nice. Because yeah. then they can, like, <laughs> voice, they can be like, no, nah, like, I'm going to help you make this, like, the best it can be because... They, ha- they get it. I'm better than you at this. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be real with you, too. Like, yeah. nah, yeah, that could, that's wrong. Or, like, yeah, yeah. that could be better. Yeah, yeah. It helps it, it, the move along part, too, because right. you don't have to question. You just know if it if it's good or bad and needs to be redone. And that same goes with drama. Same goes with anything. Like, I feel like they, they could just be, like, when you have someone that's, like, just knows what they're doing and, like, can just guide you along, it is nice. Like, it's nice to record yourself. It's a good skill to have. You should definitely do it. But it is also very nice to have the outside person to give you feedback that isn't your own brain sometimes. Yeah. And you don't always have to record to post stuff. I think that recording is a great tool for just he- like listening to your playing mm-hmm. and improving off 100%. of what you hear, the dissonance between what you hear and what you think you should hear. Yeah, that no, it helps, it, it helps you improve no matter. See what your you're weaknesses, playing. right? Yeah, no wonder, no matter what you play. Uh, and then hopefully you get comfortable enough to the point where you're just like, okay, I'm gonna show people what I've been working on. And it definitely helps to surround yourself with people who are positive and aren't going to um, put you down for yellowing. Um, also, nah, never, never mind. Okay. <laughs> I have a feeling that was going to go somewhere that it didn't need to go. Uh, set up for the kick drum for this kick. I'm running a Gretsch 20 inch or 22 inch uh by 18 inch base wood kick drum that's the type of drum it is i have the iron cobra wooden beater and an evans emad on the front and the back and the front of the drum with foam rings in it so like the the porthole has a ring the kick itself on my side has this foam ring and the Inside of the drum has a pillow in it. So that's how I got this type of sound. I also have that, like, kick protector because the first couple times we were playing down here, I couldn't hear the kick drum at all, and I was just breaking through them. I'm glad we got that sorted out, which is actually, it brings me to another point, which I was going to say I was going to try to do before. Oh, the lights changed. Cool. I was going to say that the direction of the mic really impacts how it sounds. So if I take this mic as I'm hitting the drum and I just like tilt it up and down, you can get an idea of what the position does to it. So hopefully that gives you an idea of the range of the tones that you could get from just how the mic is positioned. And maybe you're trying to be artistic and you want your toms to sound like they're in a big room. So you point your mics to the sky. There's no real like correct way to do it. But if you're trying to get the most control over each microphone and each sound of the drum, which is typically why you would have so many mics on the drum set, It makes sense to have a consistent way of doing it across each drum so that they all have a similar tone. And using your ear definitely helps to develop what sounds good and what doesn't sound good. I like to point the... Some people will point the mic right into the center of the drum, but I find that that gives you a lot of bleed. So I usually go like two inches away from the rim into the drum. Mm. If the tom... Same on the snare? Snare, no. Snare, I go right More, to the center because yeah. there's no bleed to like. Yeah, no, I, that's what I was thinking too. So yeah, I figure the mic can totally affect the the tone of the drum. Like this drum set with a different set of mics will sound like a completely different drum set. Yeah. Oh yeah, hundred <clears throat> percent. Yeah. Do you remember recording when someone had like the mic hookup where it was just like, "Yo, these are sick. These mics are sick." Like that kind of. Vibe to it, uh, for drums, mm-hmm. 
Yeah. I mean, I think the room can affect it, too, for sure. Like, we're in a freaking small box of a room right now with brick walls and a lot of padding, so the drums are just generally going to be pretty dead where we are. Yeah. But I think the room can have a lot to do with it. <clears throat> I know, like, I always like recording drums at the, uh, I always like recording drums at, um. Small room. Nah, small room is small, too. Yeah. Small room, huh? <laughs> uh, I, I was going to say, uh, Mercy. Sam's studio is... is his, that was a nice spot. His, his his room is nice. That's like a nice, bigger, open, more open, like, boomier sounding room for drums, I feel like. That's the one we did uh, the small talk video at, right? Yeah. Jamie, can you pull up the small talk video? <laughs> also, what's up, Johnny? What up, Johnny? Y.O. in Welcome the house you. again? Uh, we're not we're not playing music tonight, but um, today we're talking about music. We're just talking about music. So yeah. if you're a music meister, maybe maybe this maybe this is a vibe. Um, band practice was supposed to be two hours ago, bro. This is the room we were just talking about, and the drums sound pretty dope in here. Sorry, I meant to do this instead. We did the uh, the last American pinup EP we did in this room too. I wonder if the stream is hearing this, actually, now that I think about it. Let me check real quick. Looks like it. Yeah, I hope so. Um, if you guys can't hear it, let us know. Yeah, Y.O. in the house. This was Artemis V. what? It's an old Artemis, bro. OG Artemis. I want one of those mics. The 7B? I I saw that sure today put out a um podcasting mic that looks like the 7B. Oh yeah. And it's cheaper. It's this thing. MV7. Well, what's the difference? I wonder. Oh, it's USB. It's USB and it has the same uh diaphragm as the 7B so that if you don't want to shell out the extra fifty dollars for the seven B, it's a hundred, dude. It's it's a hundred dollars cheaper than the seven B. Oh, so maybe it's not as I I would imagine that ha just having like this stuff in it will impact the noise, and also how much you can gain the mic up. But I don't know. Sure, it's pretty good with their stuff. Like, let's see. I wonder what if you need that. You you probably don't need the cloud lifter for this too, either, because because it has a USB function. <laughs> I would imagine, yeah. Like, how would you boost the signal any more than that? It looks like sure dies it again. Oh, no. <laughs> they killed someone with this mic. Okay, I'm done. I'm sorry. They just released that? But, yeah, you're, no kidding. Uh, it's 400 yeah, Holy dude. shit. They're expensive. But this is pro audio gear, and this is prosumer podcaster type gear. Like, if you're using one of these, you probably have the budget for it. Um, yeah, I've always wanted one, but you have to buy it's because it sucks because you have to buy that four hundred dollar mic and the cloud lifter, which is one hundred fifty dollars. It's 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 a five hundred fifty dollar investment for a microphone, which is like crazy. It's 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 just expensive. When this microphone was a hundred dollars, the one I'm talking into, the one you're talking into is a hundred. A hundred bucks, yeah, like, bucks, yeah like just for the staple. For, for like, that's five fifty just to make the thing work. That's why I haven't bought one, even though I love that mic. It's just. This, 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 this is some dough, man. <laughs> and we're jetty. still trying to figure out all this other stuff that we're doing too. So, like, yeah, I would look into that podcast. I might, I might see with some reviews. I would love to see a video. I bet you there's a YouTube video of someone talking back and forth between that and the SM7B. You want to check that out? I would be curious to see what what that kind of thing would be. Because if it's close enough, I'd buy that just so you don't have to get the cloud lifter and you could just USB it. That's sick. Yeah, you don't need an interface to record. Scuzzy, what's good? JP and Karina, thanks for letting us know you could hear it. Thank you, Johnny, for for chilling with us. Um, let's see what that thing said. Like, maybe there's like an AB. I bet you there's a AB. There's got to be one if it's been out for a few weeks at least by now. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like the first thing that showed up as soon as you typed that. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, or is see if we could find a video. Oh, sweet. Sweetwater <laughs> did one. Oh, oh nice. Today, we're Let me put it back on sure that screen cap. Podcasting, broadcast, and streaming. Let's get started. Are you a podcast meister? Do you need the best podcasting mic uh, of all time? It's got a volume. Oh, so the volume's right on the mic. 
video is a brand new the gain? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, the volume control? You could also plug your headphones into it and hear whatever the other person's saying. And of course, you can use it in your recording studio as well. But it really shines the way you're hearing it today on a voice. And what you're hearing is the USB output. We've also got the XLR connected just for monitoring purposes with our cameras. The MV7 is a large diaphragm dynamic microphone that incorporates incredible It does both outputs at the same time. That's dope. With your Mac or Windows computer or iOS or Android device. The free motive It works with mobile too. That's kind of a game changer. Oh, I would get that instead of the little guy, dude. For microphone to my knowledge. Even though the little guy's kind of dope still <laughs> cuz you can bring yeah, it everywhere. Yeah. You can take it wherever. Right. To match the response. You might not want to go into public and throw that in front of someone's face. <laughs> Oh, it's got a lot of features. I think that all these companies that produce the gear are starting to catch up oh, oh, with. Wait, hold, wait, go back. Let's hear this part. This is what I... Oh, my bad. Let's hear the back and forth. This is the new Shure MV7 podcast microphone. This is the Shure SM7B studio standard broadcast microphone. Wow. Wait, go back. This is the Shure SM7B a crisper. standard broadcast microphone. MV7, test. One, two, three, four. SM7B, test. One, two, three, four. I hope you've enjoyed this look at the Shure MV7. It's pretty close. Inspired by the I don't know is, if it's... Is it $200 close? Is it $100 plus the, plus the cloud lifter close? Or is it... Which is two, which is actually two fit, $300 more. <laughs> yeah. Is it... Three, it's, I would say it's... I would buy that. I would buy that podcasting mic. Especially the USB function's nice, dude. If you don't That's have so to, convenient to if have. You don't have to, if you don't have to... If you could go podcast anywhere and you don't have to bring an interface and all the gear, it's just like, oh, I'm just going to bring my phone and that. Because you said it works with your phone. So I was like, I'm going to bring my phone and that, and that's how I'm going to record my podcast into my voice memo app or straight into Anchor or whatever you use to... Yeah, you, or if you, you just, have two of them, you get a little USB hub for your phone because they make those now. And then you and plug that's all you need to bring. No computer. Phone and no that. extra shit. Like, maybe you need an app that will let you control the recording of two different mics, I guess. I, I think, you but know, I think you could do that naturally, like internally. Do, I think you could do it in GarageBand on your phone. Nice. If you have an iPhone, or you can do it. Anchor is the app that I use to, that's what I use to upload my podcasts, but mm -hmm. you can record right into Anchor too. Like, that's you could sick. straight up just, you could get the Anchor app and record straight into it and then hit hit send out and it sends it out to all the podcasting things like all in one app that's amazing dude we've yeah, come that, a real long way with those types of apps that mic looks sick i kind of want one yeah right we have the <laughs> the gear thirst right now <laughs> <laughs> uh the guy did sound a lot like the bop it guy twist it you never seen mitch gallagher bro Pull boy, it. My boy Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. He does all those videos. <laughs> he does like a lot of Oh, videos. yeah. He's like a, a, a Sweetwater celebrity. <laughs> oh, she said. Yeah. Like the boys and Uh All right. So, Como. Are we doing the Coma thing? What's what's going? Oh, yeah, yeah. I think you already got the bit that I was trying to do. I was, I was going to say, okay, and scene, go. And then I... And then you like ask me a question about. Oh, hey, right, so right. we're here to learn uh, right, about right. miking drums today. All right, so I just came out of a coma, and I'm here to learn about miking drums. I don't, I don't know exactly anything about all of this. So, um, how many microphones do you need for drums, bro? If you just got out of a coma, we don't really need to talk about drums right now don't you want to go no, no, see no. your family or no 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 i i, I want to know about drums uh, oh okay okay <laughs> but just just so you know like the, to come out of a coma and go right into a drums is kind of peculiar given your your accident that you had my accident i dude all that happened was i got into a fight with a guy with drumsticks and he jammed him into my eyeballs, and now I have two glass eyeballs. Wow. You must, they must have really injected you with a lot of those pain meds or whatever they gave you at the hospital, because I'm pretty sure we were miking a drum set at that concert, and uh, one of the cymbals <laughs> fell over and booped you. 
Do I'm, you remember that? I don't know what you're talking about. Wow, you don't remember the drumming accident. Amazing. Um, okay, so given that you're here, out of your coma, ready to learn about drums, and you don't remember any of the booping that happened. Pooping? Yeah, when you pooped on the drum set. <laughs> oh, yeah. Before we taught you how to mic it up, and then the cymbal fell on you and put you in a co- you were there, I was there, the drums were there. We were all there. We were all there, man. <laughs> so how many mics do we need? We were, we were kind of t- touching on this before. You could use one mic if you really need to. You could use two mics to get a stereo image if you want to pan the drums left and right. Or you can mic each drum as an individual source and have a ton of control over what your drums sound like. None of them is the absolute right way or wrong way to do it. Whoa, that's really cool. Yeah, it is pretty cool because you can watch YouTube videos of, or like just look online and see people who have all the crazy, whoa, we have an antivirus. Yes, get rid of the virus. <laughs> is there an <laughs> uncle virus? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, here's my number. Um, no. how, <laughs> how many mics would be considered too much, obsessive or crazy? I don't think there's an upper limit, to be honest. I think I think there is. I think that if you have the money, you could put as many mics as you want. We did like 13 on Balance the Imbalance. Oh, on, our, on our EP, I think there was 13 mics on the drums, if I remember. On a four-piece kit. Right. One less drum than this. Four-piece kit. Thir- I think because I remember... We had kick in, kick out. We had snare top, snare bottom. We had tom, tom. We had two overheads. And then there was two, like, further room mics. And then there was the one centered room mic. And then there was the two room mics behind, I think, too. In the far, far (laughs) corner. So, like, if this was the drum set, picture there being mics that were, like, in these corners. And in those corners. Yeah. And then one also, like, really far away from the kit dead center. And then one, I think, another layer of mics, like, even further back than that, too, into the room. So that you have a stereo image going all the way to the back of the room and you get that like rich character that close mics don't really capture yeah and then and then you had your kick in you had, you had one inside your kick you had one outside your kick one mic on each time and then two on the snare and then the two ones over the head i don't think they i don't know if we did a hi hat mic i don't remember if we did that either there was like at least 12 to 14 mics, I would say. I, th- I remember 14 for some reason, a little more than 12. I don't, I think you were right the first time. <laughs> Word. Which is amazing for someone who just got out of a coma. <laughs> 100 mics would still be considered okay and definitely not too many. If you have the money for it, maybe. Also, if you have an interface or some kind of console that will allow you to plug in 100 microphones. I would say (laughs) any more than 32 microphones for a drum set might be pushing it (laughs) because that's just like how the the numbers work in eights, like eights of channels. 32 is really expensive, like per channel. That's a lot of money. But some studios have even more. Some studios have really high ceilings and they'll stick a microphone permanently in the top of the ceiling pointed at the wall so it can capture the reflections of the drum set as it bounces off the weird shape of the ceiling. And some studios are known for that specific like character that they can give to the drums because they got a weird-ass ceiling that sounds cool when you point a mic at it. You could go pretty, neat. You could go pretty wild. I remember hearing also about this engineer. I forget what band it was. I, pr- I should probably know. He put he took two fifty sevens like the n- uh, normal snare mic, and put them in water, like buckets of water, outside of the drums as a stereo pair for some artistic reason. But the character that you get from doing something weird and wacky like that, you can't really reproduce it unless you put the microphones into a bucket of water for whatever reason. Weird. That's weird. I wish I had the money to ruin microphones like that. <laughs> <laughs> Oy. 
Mitch the goat. Mitch the goatiger. Mitch the goatiger. <laughs> Mitch Gallagher, the goat. Mitch goat to, I don't know, whatever. Mitch goatiger. I had a uh, another idea for this stream, which would be to uh, do the do the group scribe thing and have the chat help us with coming up with the groove. Oh, nice. So I guess we could give that a shot, but I don't want to like really put anyone on the spot right now. I guess we could come up with the groove. Okay. Or I could just throw this out to the chat and be like, chat, give us a letter, R or L. Groove scribe. Oh, is this, a, is this just a website? That's what I love about it is I can just copy this link to this website. I'll show you guys over here on the screen cap thing. But I use this website. I've been using it more recently. I used to use Guitar Pro a lot. Excuse me. This white claws be hitting different. Yeah, that's it. Them. Didn't you do a sight reading challenge recently? On I feel like I oh, did. Yeah. I dream that, or no, I did that. I that did. wasn't in my coma that I saw that. No, yeah, I did, okay. I did do that on TikTok. I, I I blind. I just like blind reacted to. It. I saw. I pulled up. I saw what it was gonna be. Oh, I know. I saw he did other ones. It was easy. The other ones, and I just picked the hardest one he did. I was like, I'm gonna blind do this and see if I can do it on a video. That was crazy. The other video that I saw from you recently that was sick was the uh the duet with. The dude who did Yellow Card? Yeah. That was fire, dude. That was <laughs> yeah, fire. Yellow Card meets Broadway or whatever. That was I some remember next level the stuff. look in your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Cardifer says, R-E, kid. <laughs> Wait up. Let's go back to this tab. R-E. Oh, okay. We got an R from Karina. Cardifer says E, and he also says kid. Wait, what did you ask for again? Uh, letters, an R or an L, because I thought it would be interesting to try to do a pattern like that. But you can make a pattern from anything. I remember Frank DeSantis telling me a story about how he used to... <laughs> Re kid. Frank DeSantis told me a story about... <laughs> About how he used to throw change down the stairs to get rhythms for Scoutmaster Jack songs, and then he would type them into Tabit when he just like could it, if but he you, hit a roadblock. You can't take any advice from that guy. <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to writing drums, you probably shouldn't do that. Now he is really obsessive about it, everything being like he likes things to be like he. Dude, I've seen him freak out while recording because he didn't plan ahead i mean it was his own fault for not like he had the time he was a lot of the time he chose not to <laughs> but but he i've seen him like get angry because he didn't have everything exactly dialed into the exact hit that he wanted it to be he he needs he's one of those guys that just like really likes to type out sit there and no type part, out and no for no know exactly what he's gonna play on the dot which uh, you know it's a uh, more power to you yeah, uh, I Frank. mean, his creativity is next level, and that's what makes his playing really unique. But it could also be a challenge when you're just trying to get through the recording process and you need to wait for someone to write out note for note what they want to play. I was like that in Nice Shot Kid. I needed to write everything down to, to play it and feel con like content with how I was playing. It was really technical, the music, though, too. That also was a big part of it. It's because just hearing the guitar riffs and the breakdowns that I needed to comp was not enough for me to process it at the music level that I was at or am at. And I can't just, like, hear a guitar part and be like, oh, yeah, I'm going to play this technical drum part and sync with that guitar part. That was definitely a challenge with that type of music, and writing it out was the way that I got around it. Yeah. I feel you. Okay, sick. So we got two R's and an L. Let's run with it. Let's let's do right, right, left as a pattern. Which is like the opposite of what I'm used to playing, which would be like right, left, left. And I think that leading with the left hand is 
a good way to push yourself to learn new stuff. So what if we just kept that pattern going all the way around and we, we found a way to break it up? I'm pretty sure there's a way you can, right? Left, left, right, left, left, right, left. So that's pretty cool because it, it ends after eight notes. Right, left, left, right, left, left, right, left. And maybe we can knock one of these out and replace it with the kick drum to keep it interesting. Or maybe we can leave this kick here mm -hmm. and take that out. Bam. So that, it's, the, it's the same pattern because you usually play the kick drum with your right foot. Yeah, so it's right, left, left, right, left, left, right, left. Is this, are you going for a fill? Is that what we're going for here? Or Yeah, let's let's do this as something you could play in, in like a groove and have two bar or two... Yeah, a two-bar phrase. What if you went? Or a one-bar phrase of two-four. Want to do two? Can we do two? What if you did? Uh, what if you did two hi hats on the left? Left. Okay. <clears throat> we could also add the toms in if we want. As a ghost note, or as like a. Yeah, yeah, why not? Okay, cool. So then we have like... Mm, I feel in the downbeat on that part too. Like that sort of revert, uh, pound drum type thing? Or are you thinking toms or kick? Hmm. No kick. Maybe kick on the right. Okay. And then make the left... Uh hi-hat and the right and the other left hi-hat? I don't know. I think because of the way that I understand that I play drums, this might make more sense because to do two left-handed notes on two different drums would require you to split the double and that's hard to do because you gotta... Yeah, true. Up to speed is a challenge. Um, you're right, you're right, you're right. What do we do with that last note? Do uh do a hi hat. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, like, so it's a put to to yeah. That's pretty cool. And if I get the sticking right, let's see what the chat is up to at the same time. I apologize. I had I was pretty sure I turned off the merch um bot before, but I guess he's back in full force. Yeah, I guess. How's trying to get Jack Black uh, to to guest on her shit? Um, it's it hasn't gotten any clo gotten any closer. I have, I have I've been slack and I forgot about those honestly. Karina is right, but you know what? We did want R R L and we did it backwards. My bad. Let's just run with it because it's already there. We could also do that other one later. <laughs> the window is dancing for some reason. Yeah, it is. <laughs> what is it dancing? Okay, so the inverted double is new to me. Don't practice those often at all. Yeah. Um but it is definitely a cool sounding it's like a delay gated reverb sound. It's gonna be weird to come up in the hi hat too with your right the right left left is the part that Nope. Yeah, coming back up to the hi hat is kinda awkward. It's awkward, yeah. It's doable. I think I, you know what it is? Like if, if, if you had put this in front of me without the left, right in it, I would play it completely different. I'd be like, I'd be like, I would do, I think I would do all those snares on my left hand. That's a good point. It's, it, it like reminds me of how I used to tab out guitar parts for other people and they would be like, 
I get the melody that you're trying to play, but I, this is how would you do this? this is, <laughs> <laughs> you got a twelve on the on one string and a and a five on the other. Do I have to? No, you wrote this wrong. Like that. That is one way to look at it. Or if you're crazy enough, you could try to play that five and the twelve at the same time. Is that a reach? Is that really far away? Five and twelve on the guitar? Yes. That's it's really <laughs> fucking that's impossible <laughs> to play. I don't <laughs> my hands would have to be like three times the size, probably. And I have pretty long fingers. You do. <laughs> <laughs> You're like you have an extended reach and you should probably still need two hands. Yeah, I don't think I can. To do it. L L R is still cool. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to get it to the point where I could play it in a groove. Do it. So you do. I think the shortcut to doing that, sorry that I just keep jumping around, is to do it the way that I would do it if I was like at school or standing in line or in my car waiting at a red light, which is like get the the pattern down with your hands and feet and then take it to the kit so that your body has been there before and you're not like uh, 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 how do I drums so on my hands and feet it would be kick left left right left left right left but on the, the last right I'm playing a kick I'm substituting that right left with a kick how would you break it down uh, I always so I always I always look at every instrument <laughs> as a, a muscle memory exercise and muscle memory just comes from doing something very slow and building the speed so i would just do it slow <laughs> i would sit at the kit and just do it slow i'd be like i'd sit there for like five minutes and just do it over like It'd be helpful to have some sort of uh, reference, like a click going. I don't know if this. That's fast. Can you slow it down? Yeah. That's. Yeah, like that. Like 50? Yeah. That's a cool lick. You got it. It challenges your left hand to play more, which I think in a in a short pattern is good to practice because it just gets your left hand working more often. Um, yeah, you got it. It would be cool to end it by playing this in the groove. Let me go back to this view. Every instrument. So how many instruments do you both play? You play a lot more than I do. I recently just, I've always played drums. I tried to play bass for a little bit and then dropped it. And then I've been messing with keys a little bit lately. But I'm not a pianist at any capacity. I'm barely a drummer. Yo, stop it. <laughs> uh, I play um, guitar, bass, drums, keys. Um, and I can get through on a lot of other instruments aka i can make my way through a solid sixth grade level on most of the woodwinds brass instruments trumpet trombone sax clarinet flute i can get to about a sixth grade level i would say and then uh that's still very respectable that's like being able to speak a lang six different languages at a uh, sixth grade level, which is still <laughs> pretty impressive. Like. I, guess, I, don't know. I had to teach band for for four months for my student teaching, so that really pushed me. Because I mean, he would just throw me in, man. He'd be like, "Yo, we got a fifth grade cl flute class coming in, and uh, you're up." I'd be like, "All right, what am I the showing them?" And then like I'd have like five minutes to prepare what I was about to show them, so I'd have to learn it and uh, force yourself to learn a new thing on a new I mean, instrument. I, I, yeah, I mean, I took a woodwind <laughs> class, I took a brass class because I had to. For my program, like I had to take the classes to play all those things to some degree. So it wasn't like, but it, you know, 
when you take a class in sophomore year of college and then in your graduate year, you, they're like, all right, yep, you remember the flute thing you played three years ago? Yeah, yeah, you got to teach that today. But then I, I lived in the band room at the high school, so all my free periods, I would just mess around on or whatever. He'd be like, all right, yeah, you can grab a clarinet and just, like, mess around on it. And he'd, like, just try to play this. He would just, like, give me things. He'd be like, just try to play this. And he'd give me, like, fourth, fifth, sixth grade level, like, stuff. And just would, to push your and chops. I just, and I would just mess around and see if, uh, if I could, like, do it and get the sound out. But, yeah, I own a trumpet, and I own a trombone, and I own a clarinet. So I met, Outside I, of having to teach them, have you ever picked them up just to be like, <sighs> no. I mean, Let's besides when we, we, we threw that trombone line on Seasons. But for those who don't know. <laughs> yeah, if you ever listen to our song Seasons on the recording, the trombone line, I did it. He played it. I did it. And <laughs> we went as far as trying to prove that. Why would we not do that on the stream? I have no idea. Oh, we're doing it we, next, next yeah, time. Yeah, let's do next, it next, next time. Next time, I'm going to break the trombone out on the stream. You heard it here <laughs> first. Thanks for being here. Um... <laughs> I think that's long overdue. I mean, we switched the kick drum out on seasons before. I guess we can we can do anything at this point. You know what's funny? Actually, you know what's another instrument that was funny, dude? I, I used to teach at a music school in Austin, and uh, I had a guitar student, and uh, or like on my schedule it said guitar, and it was a new student, and I went out, and it was a little girl, and she had a mandolin in her hands. That's not a guitar. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, no, but this is really, it's kind of funny because I went to her, her, it was her and her mom. And I was like, oh, it's a mandolin? It says guitar on my on my schedule. It must be, it might, I think there's a mistake. Let me go talk to the boss. And I went and I talked to my boss and he was like, nah, nah, you got this. And he handed me a mandolin and he handed me like a mandolin book, like a beginner mandolin. He's like, eh, you'll, you'll, you'll make it happen. But the awkward part was I then had to go back to the mom. That After I, you just said, this isn't my lesson. <laughs> yeah. And I had to say, oh, it is my lesson. And she was like, are you a a mandolin instructor? Are and you I, sure? <laughs> and I was, like, I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. The first time I ever played a mandolin ever was in the first lesson with that little girl. <laughs> like I opened up the book and I was like, all right, so this is how a mandolin's tuned. Then I had to like, <laughs> to like look and just and I taught that girl for like six months. But I I I mean I was just I was always ahead of, a little bit ahead of her because I she didn't know how to do anything. She didn't know how to read music. She didn't know how to do so. I was always a little ahead of her. But it was kind of funny because I have messed around. I've taught mandolin lessons before, even though I had no idea what I was doing. So like if there was some sort of movie type <laughs> hostage situation and you had to play mandolin <laughs> to save all the people. I could mess around a little bit. I know it's it's like an upside down bass. It's tuned G D A B or A E. Interesting. It's, it's like, backwards, it's right? Like backwards bass. Wow. That's pretty cool, man. All right. I'm going to try to play this in a groove, see if I can even remember what, what it was. And then uh, I think it's a good spot to call it. Um, I don't know if there's any chat messages that we missed, but if we did, sorry. Um, and then I'll just sum up what I said before at the end of the stream. Okay. Okay. So. Huh? Maybe I play it twice, or do I play it on the four? Sounds good. It feels like a paradiddle. It feels a lot like a right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, or a double paradiddle, which would make sense because that's got the right, left, lefts and the left, right, rights in it. Yeah, that that kick to that foot to left hand high hats the part that be, that was fucking me up. I feel that it was awkward to play, but I see some drummers do that like it's nothing. So maybe it's worth. Pushing ourselves to learn how to do it. I saw Aaron 
Aaron Spears, the drummer who uh, got famous for doing Usher's Caught Up as like a solo performance, I think that's what he like really blew up off of. I saw him do this as like a as to fill in like the space of one eighth note in the middle of a, like a lick. I it came up on my Facebook feed the other day. He was like. have no he like fit that into the groove and it just felt like normal and i was like how did he have two hands on his one hands for a second that was crazy can you play a double paradiddle but one hand on the ride dome and the other on a closed hi-hat then play a bass drum matching your right hand and snare hit on the first hit of the left double paradiddle this is a lot but just asking I feel that it is a lot. I, I could I could try to to like piece it together from your comment, or what might make more sense is if you go to the group scribe and then like send us DM us. Put it in your Discord, dude. Hop in the Discord if you want. Discord. Or message it to us on the next stream and or do it now and I'll learn it now. I was gonna wrap up the stream, but let me see if I can understand. Double paradiddles, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, right, left, left. left. And so that's the pattern between the hi hat and the ride. Then play a bass drum matching my right hand. Damn. And then the snare on the first hit of the double. That's hard. Do I go back and do those lefts after the? I think you're pretty close. Look up Drive In, Drive Out by DMB and like towards the end. Oh, do you know who DMB is? No. Yeah. Sorry. Carter Beauford. He's a maniac. Drummer for Dave Matthews Band. Um, he, uh. I think he learned by watching other people play drums, and then he was he was mirroring mirroring them with his setup. So he was learning lefty because he's like, oh, that's he has his setup on that as I'm watching the TV and no. playing drums to it. And then I think he started taking lessons, and the drummer's like, well, you got the kit backwards. What are you doing? And he's like, open hand, motherfucker. No, okay. just, he started playing open hand because that was the way he learned. And he was just like, right. this is more comfortable. Yeah, that makes sense. I, Dave Grohl learned how to play on pots and pans because he couldn't afford a drum set. But yeah. he, he, like, by the time he sat at a drum set for the first time, he already knew how to do a lot of beats and shit, but he had only done them on pots and pans, and he made pretend it was a drum set. Like, he, like, set them up like it was a drum set, like he saw on TV, and just, like, <laughs> would, like, learn how to, like, just hit the pots and pans, and then when he got a drum set, like, he kind of knew how to play already. That's pretty impressive <laughs> to push yourself to, to learn on a nothing. You know what's a sick video nothing. that you should blind react to one of these days? Hmm. Have you ever seen Dave Grohl play on the kitty drum set? Oh, I think is this like a SpongeBob or it's a first like one of those act? like little baby drum set? And dude, my he man, play. he shreds it. <laughs> You're like, oh, I dude, why not? <laughs> why? Not? I mean, we have the power to do that. <laughs> I haven't seen this in a long time. It's been years since I've seen this, but I just remembered it randomly. He shreds the kitty drum set. Kids drum set. It came up right here. 14 years ago, bro. Oh, my God. <laughs> Is this it? Yeah, it must be it, I guess. He autographs it. Are you going to play it? <laughs> There's a video of him playing it for sure.
<laughs> I don't know if that was the video, though, I'm thinking of. I, think, I feel like there was another one, but I guess I could be wrong. Dude, he's a god on any drum set. He's probably. a god on any instrument. He's a he's one of those guys that's just a god. He's just good at everything, dude. Like, he's a good songwriter. He's a good guitar player. Like, he's good at things. Have you seen this before? Oh, no, I broke it. He's sitting on a cone. <laughs> the OG videos with the with the Hello Kitty kit. Like Portnoy is a beast, dude. He's making the Jigglypuff kit sound pretty good. <laughs> Don't you just hate it when you're playing your Pokemon double base kit and it moves slightly away from you so you fall on the ground? <laughs> dude, did I ever tell you about my first drum kit? What was your first drum kit? Before I got before I got my actual real first drum kit, it just reminded me because of that. Mm -hmm. Um my first drum kit was I had an old kick drum from, like, a 60s, like, uh, jazz kit that I don't remember how I got, and it had a tom attached to it. Mm -hmm. And then I took... It was set up in this garage, actually. And then I took an American Idol drum set. Like, a kitty drum set like that, but it said American Idol on the front head. I don't know why I had that either. So it was... <laughs> you just came into some It was a double jump. bass kit, but it was this old American shitty Idol 60s edition? kit... That I got in the, from the dump or something, and then an American Idol drum set, and then a, the snare was this. It was literally a kid's kit. That was my first. That was the first drum kit I had at my house here. How old were you when you had that? Like eleven. Wow. And then when I was twelve, my parents got me like an actual like five piece kit for for Christmas. And well, it was funny though because I remember when I got it. I think I told you this story actually, but I th remember when I got it and I like that it was set up in the living room for Christmas. Like I got I got on. I literally sat. And I was just like. Psh, 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 Cause I already like knew, like I had already fucked around, and I also played at John Sipa's house on his drum set a bunch. So, and my parents had never seen. It, and they were like, "You don't play this thing already?" <laughs> like I was already like, <laughs> "Why do you think I wanted one?" <laughs> I, was like, I know how to do it already. I just, I just needed one. Dude, that that drum that drum beat, the Amen break, is like what, the first drum beat for so many people. And I think there's a couple of documentaries about how iconic it is. They're like, Oh yeah. yeah. My my first one was just like a just like a pst, 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 nice like straight. the standard yeah, like yeah. yeah I think that was my first thing but you were playing half of the ACD songs ACDC songs on your first go yeah yeah I <laughs> dude it's it weird there was no I don't feel like there was no learning curve to it either for me well at least. there was but it wasn't on a real drum set no it was it was I was on John Steepa's drum set because that's what happened I I would play it on his kit. At his house, and I was like, I want one at my house. So I just scrapped together pieces of kids' drum sets to make uh, what I could of a drum set, essentially, just so I had something to hit. <laughs> I feel that, but that I didn't have. But the first time I played was on like his actual, like his grandfather's kit. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna ask if you ever had that moment of breaking the like coordination gap that a lot of drummers go through breaking the first time they play, which is like your right hand and your left foot are tied together. Did you ever experience it's, that? It's weird. I don't really remember. I don't remember that much. I don't remember. I don't even remember learning. the. It was almost like I, I feel like a first, I watched him and his dad play and I was able to kind of just sit down and like do it. Like That's I had, crazy. I had the coordination for it like instantly. I was already a pretty decent, yeah, that was weird. Was pretty weird. Maybe I, it's cold. I was already a pretty decent guitar player. Like, I don't know if that had anything to do with it. Like I was already kind of musical though. Yeah. But like I, I, I kind of just sat down and I was able to just instantly, like, I could instantly just like hear something and be like, I could copy that. That you know, like I, I heard American Idiot and I was like, and I was able to copy it, like That's pretty sick. pretty off the bat. But I was doing that with guitar so much already. You know, like I was already. You had the rhythm down, like, like the understanding of rhythm down, and you just had to transform it into a drums. Different thing, yeah. Movement. But I, I already like it was song. Like I would listen. I already knew how to play a bunch of ACDC songs. I had listened to them so many times, 
and I was used to listening to a guitar part and teaching it to myself. So listening to a drum part and teaching it to myself kind of came naturally. It was almost like I could, I could do this. That's dope. I had to work my ass off to get through, get over that hump. <laughs> it was, a, it was like a, I, my body was like not made to play drums at all. <laughs> it just didn't want to do the part that like. I couldn't separate my right hand and my right foot for the longest time, and I really had to sit there and, like, to understand how to, like, play the kick without going. Right, right. Doing eighth notes with your hand. Right, and right, I get you. I think a lot of younger drummers have that Yeah, I don't, that I, don't gap. Remember, I don't remember having that. Like, I remember tough moments, like, learning. So, for example— Do you remember teaching people who did have that oh, yeah, problem? Yeah, yeah, okay. that, that 100%. That's happened a bunch. But uh, I, I remember— for example, when I first learned like American Idiot on the drums, <laughs> and um, I remember first just learning it like, but the actual kick pattern is. I remember that being a process, like trying to like, but that was hard, like because I was yeah. just learning. Like, I, but I first started with just like doing. Like I was able to play. I was able to play to the song. It's like I could put the song on and do that. But then, like, trying to do, like, that was, like, a whole other process. Because that is the, the separation between your right and your your foot and your right hand, for sure. Because your, your right hand just is straight eighth, but your foot's going. Very syncopated with the right hand at the same time. That I, I do remember that being really tough. But, yeah, I don't really remember. It's almost like a blur. I don't really oh, uh, Charter for it, it blocked your link. Do I mod him so he can post links, or do I just I I gotta figure out how to enable links? In the Discord, maybe. Yeah, throw it in the in the stick with the Discord, or even the Shakeout Discord, because you could be. It looks like maybe they they're watching on different platforms because this thing is active. Um, so if you're on whatever page you're on, just check the Discord and post that link there. I th- was it that thing that I played before the uh, the Carter Beaufort the. That would be cool if you posted that for anyone else, and then maybe I could like sync it up to the, the uh, group scribe thing. But um, yeah, that's pretty much what I wanted to cover today. I'm glad you were a part of it. I'm sorry about your coma. Are you sure you're you're good to be like? If you need to go see your family or whatever, I don't have a family. I'm, I'm good. I'm a loner. Okay. I mean, I'm I'm glad you came and jumped right into drums right <laughs> after your coma that was caused by a drums accident. I don't even know what you're talking about. Who are you? <laughs> Who am I? Barktopia is in the house! Just yeah. as we were well, questioning our existence. Yeah. Did I show you the uh, How to Drive Stick intro with Frank DeSantis? No. I think this, I think that. Oh, yeah, actually, you did. You showed me part of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you showed me part of it. Let me see if it's here. If it's not here, I'm not going to bother. I'm just going to talk about it. How to drive, stick with it. I realized that I didn't shoot the end to that entire sketch. I was just like, yeah, I'm going to go learn how to drive, stick, and shoot it, and it'll be a video. But that's not how videos work at all. Um, Sometimes that's how they work, but that wasn't how this one worked at all. Uh, the, The major key to succeeding at making videos is to plan how to end them because right now what i'm saying right now is the end to this video and i'm glad that you watched it but i didn't shoot an ending so this is how it's going to end and if it gets enough likes or people comment and think this is a cool way to expand on their drumming skills i'll make another part two or something that could be cool or i might just move on go learn something else Maybe it's not worth making another. It's 16 minutes long. Jeez. Oh, no. This is because I think I put like 10 minutes of. Oh, oh, no. This is 16 minutes long. I need to cut it down further. So I think that's another reason why it would be nice to have some direction from the people who are potentially going to watch it. Um, I'll play the intro for anyone who stuck around to the end, and then we'll end the stream. Thanks for being here, Barktopia. I know you came last minute, but. You know, who doesn't? So, driving stick is as easy as one, two, three. Four, five, reverse, <laughs> clutch, and you can't forget there's a gas and a pedal, 
the brake um, uh, steering wheel too. Nice touch with and the stick with the t-shirt. Captain Ray Z D here. We're learning how to drive stick on stick with it. It's not something you can learn overnight. We're gonna try to peck in as much as we can today. But you know, you're gonna have to stick with it. I'm AJK. Uh, I got invited to come learn how to drive stick. Never seen a car before in my whole life. <laughs> True. Aware of drumstick, so this should be interesting. Today you're gonna learn. You're gonna learn to stick with it. You're gonna need these. This is executive Boulevard. Before we get to the spot. Like by the USPS. <laughs> yeah. We got kicked out of the first spot. Wow. All this for learning how to drive stick? I like that the drums are in the back too. Dude, it's stick with it. Of course there's gotta be drums in it. The car sounds are in the video, in the song, in the background. Which, by the way, I should mute so that we don't get um, copyright claimed. But, yeah, pretty much. Here's the intro. Hey, what are we going to do today? Okay, and then it goes into the tutorial. This is just a rough cut. Thank you for being here to see the um, intro to that. And... Maybe the rest of it will get released online. Nice. Nice try, Barktopia. <laughs> we see awful. it says Rick Astley Vivo, bro. Yeah. And we have X-ray vision that lets us see through links and understand when they're the Rick Astley link. Some people have this number, this l memorized so that they don't get Rick rolled anymore. <laughs> We're not going that hard, though. It's D Q. Is that an O or a Q? It looks like a Q, right? D capital Q, lowercase w, 4 w, 9 w. So there's more links and shit now. Do I do it? Yeah, but I, it's probably going to be some Rick Roll shit. Or... You did not. <laughs> okay. Catch AJ Chirella. Next Tuesday, on right. his version of this thing. Wait, wait Bartopia, what do. are you what are you doing on Tuesday at five p.m. Eastern time? I don't even know where you live, so I don't know if your five p.m. is our five p.m. But let me know. Shoot us a message on Instagram or something, because I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna invite you on. You're gonna do a kiss trivia with my dad if you're around on Tuesday. Oh, that's this tu coming Tuesday. I don't know. I'm, that's why I'm asking him if he's around. So 1 a.m. again? Well, uh, it'll be 5 p.m. 5 p.m. our time. So that's uh 10 p.m. your time? Maybe? I don't know. I go on, I go Tuesdays at 5. Word. I and think, I don't know what time it is. I think we might, I might end up shifting the stick with it thing. I wanted to just stream more. I don't know about the Tuesday night thing. I, I, I got to figure that out. I got to figure out what I'm doing first. But thanks for watching. Catch you Tuesday, if not Wednesday. Shakeout's doing her thing. It's one a.m. again at five p.m. Was she at your last um, live sesh? I don't. I don't know. I don't think so. Okay. Well, see you when we see you. And thanks for posting that link, Charterfer. What's this before we go? Vartopia, are you gonna do? You're not gonna beat my dad in Kiss, by the way. Zero chance, bro. Zero chance. Just for Rick rolling us twice with different links, like but it never starts. Oh my! Oh. God. <laughs> this has one point six million views too. Are you ready for it? Ready? One. No, it's never two. gonna start. One, two, three, go! Wait, uh, sorry, I miscounted. Dude, ready? I'm, I'm anxious with this. One. Thing. I'm anxious watching two. this. One, two, uh, three, no, I can't, go! I can't yeah. do it. We're not strange. Oh wait, it didn't start yet. Uh, he sorry. Um, hang on, this is coming up. One, two, three, go! We're not. Oh, sorry, my bad. It didn't start yet. Ha oh wait, this video is ten hours long. <laughs> no, it's it's ten minutes long. But what would you guys do if we sat here and we did that this whole time? All right, Tuesday, Parktopia, send us a message on on Instagram. If you got that, so we can, I can get that set up with you Tuesday. You against my dad, kiss trivia. Let's get it. Betsky, <laughs> Booskies, peace out.